So thanks um, everyone for, for joining uh, this afternoon. Um, obviously to hear from Michael Corcoran, the head of social at Ryanair on their kind of stratospheric uh, rise to fame through, through TikTok. So I'm just gonna do a super quick intro, hand over to Michael and then I'll, I'll run through some, some housekeeping. So uh, for those who don't know, my name is Ollie. Ollie Hills, I'm the CEO at Nonsense School. We're a, a TikTok for social media agency and also a publisher. Uh, so we've launched our own brands like Endless Mythology and Endless Pride, which have now got over 200,000 followers on uh, on TikTok. And we bring those expertise through to through to our clients. But that is far dwarfed by the success of Ryanair. So, Michael, do you want to do a quick intro? God, you're really picking me up. Hello, everyone. I am Michael Corcoran here. Um, I am head of social media at Ryanair. Um, I'm very early days in the business, about six months, but I've took on the mammoth role of steering this ship after the huge success of our TikTok account in the last year and a half. Um, my job is, is, I guess, to take what we've done so far in the world of TikTok and make all of social better for the brand or business. Uh, my background, I'm, I'm ex-Paddy Power Betfair, working for the Betfair brand for about three years. So I was lucky enough to have the keys to the Betfair brand from a global point of view. And uh, very lucky to work on a huge portfolio of assets of football clubs and talent and um, looking at how we activate the sponsorships and social media and um, in the context of sports betting and gaming. A little bit prior to that, then I would have been agency side, like probably many people listening in here today and, and, and like nonsensical uh, working in digital marketing agencies, agencies in Ireland, kind of in the early days of social before social what is what it is now and uh, working on brands such as Aldi, whatnot, Guinness uh, Storehouse, Guinness brand, Liberty Insurance, uh, I could name off many, many more, but um, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a huge in-depth experience of working in the corporate brand side for many, many years. And um, essentially where I am now is I've literally t spent the last 10 to 12 years learning how to deliver paid media corporate brand approaches for brands, uh, coming into Ryanair, taking that book, ripping it to pieces and throwing it out the window. Um, so it's an exciting opportunity to take a lot of what I've learned to date and not apply it. Love it. So, so good. And some incredible brands on there. I mean, we could probably speak for hours apart from um, on, on all the other brands, but you you are actually due a call from your wife, potentially, because she could go into, into labor at any point. So uh, fingers crossed um, we get through the next hour. But obviously, if you have to run, then we totally understand. <laughs> It's okay. And as I said before the call, if, if it's born or goes into labor, we'll name it TikTok or Ollie. We'll, we'll flip a coin and decide. <laughs> very good. Very good. Well, that was, uh, let's, let's hope that doesn't happen. But um, we will, uh, we will go. So just a bit, a bit of housekeeping. So um, obviously that we've got the Q&A feature. I'm going to ask a couple of questions to, to Michael to begin with. Um, but you don't want to hear from me because we want Michael to answer your questions. So use the Q&A um, feature through Zoom. Um, I pretty sure I set it up that you can't unmute yourself but if you do come off mute please just make sure that you are um, checking um, and the webinar is also being recorded so if you do need to drop off for whatever reason we're going to send a link through to the recording afterwards so Michael without further ado I guess why is TikTok just so important for Ryanair? Uh, I, look not just Ryanair but TikTok has come out of even during this pandemic and everything else before it as bringing back social media to what it was it's social media is fun again now that TikTok has arrived and um, a lot of things that we are looking at and exploring around gen z and a younger audience and what their wants or needs are when it comes to the role of social media as a whole not just in brand world um, is they're looking to step away from this fake filtered nonsense that we as corporate brands have created over the last number of years and no disrespect the influencer model for many that have done unrealistic things for many and and almost killed social media from what it is today and you add in on top of the monopoly of the facebook's of the world and what they've created in terms of a news feed and, and a place to escape from the real world and, and be entertained um we've ruined it. TikTok has come and it's made it fun again. And it allows us as a brand, I guess, to live and breathe our DNA as being unhinged, imperfect and self-deprecating and creating content that this audience wants and then engaging with a community in the way that they really, really enjoy. Yeah, perfect. I mean, we've already had so many, so many questions in, so I, I'll just rattle through the, the ones I've got and then we'll jump into those because some really good ones come through already. Great, um, good. Ju just in terms of your approach to TikTok compared to the likes of your Instagram 
your Twitter, etc. Just talk to us about your specific strategy for TikTok and how that differs from the rest of your accounts. It's differing a little currently, but we are taking a lot of learnings from it. So like the idea generation of the content creation differs based on us identifying trends and opportunities on what is happening and what creators are creating and using as sounds for us to then try and use the algorithm to reach as many people as possible. And um, our approach to that creation then is a little less polished compared to certain channels right now, but it's okay for us to be imperfect and rough around the edges and essentially act like a creator on the platform because the content resonates so well. Um, the other approach then is how we're cultivating the community. The time spent, the language use and how we engage with people on TikTok is quite disconnected from what we're doing in other channels now, but we have an appetite to change that. And we've applied that over the last little while in the six months that I've been here to uh, take a lot of learnings from the imperfect approach to Instagram, for example, how we engage with that community and how what we're turning was for a long time quite a negative uh, community section or a very filtered travel orientated approach to that channel and make it more entertainment friendly and serving a purpose and a point of difference than anyone else in the category. Um, you know, it's quite interesting. Um, we're, we, we have the ability to do it in, I guess, an unforced way, which can be a challenge for a lot of brands who act and behave in, in, a, in a different way on social right now. We've got a legacy as a brand that how we communicate, how we speak was always a bit provocative and different, a bit unhinged and uh, a bit imperfect in our executions because, you know, this business is interesting and in how it operates that everything we do across all elements of the business is all designed to make the operation as efficient as, and lean as possible to make the price of an airline ticket as low as it can be. Yes, we have to make money. We're, we're a business. That's the job. And we do a very good job of it. But, you know, it was easy for us to step into this world because that is how we should be acting. Uh, and it comes across more natural and it comes across in the style of content that people are looking for in social media platforms these days. Makes sense. Makes sense. Just, just one of the questions that have come in, it's about Ryanair in particular, and they describe it as having quite loose brand guidelines and getting content signed off so quickly. Well, how have you implemented that structurally um, within Ryanair? Because the stuff you're doing is so reactive. It, it's superb. Yeah, we, ha we, we are. There's a couple of things there. We don't have a very tight policy because we have a car plan just I guess responsibility and my role is to have trust there but we also don't have the rules in place which means we don't know where the line is and we're trying to discover that at the moment so my job is to start to put that policy in place now but we won't know what it is and how brave we want to be in this world and you can see with some of the content that we've pushed out on, on twitter for example recently the language we potentially use sometimes on tiktok and how far we can push that before we know what the line is uh, we do skate on, on the fence on, on a risk in terms of the type of IP we potentially use in content too. Um, my job now is to, to work with legal and others to put shape on that. We're lucky we can do that. Um, and it's a bit of discovery as we learn. And it's almost, you know, do it and then beg for forgiveness if something happens. And we're kind of, we're, we're approaching that line now. I'm hoping it won't cause too much restrictions, but the, that just puts a, a creative challenge on us even more. How can we be creative? with a couple of rules like that in place. Um, but look, we are very lucky. There's not many corporate brands out there that allows us to do it. Um, in terms of how we're set up, I guess, uh, the team has been developed and set up in a way now where we have what we call a reactive and community unit or tribe within our team that their focus for the majority of their day is scoping and discovering reactive opportunities within the world of social, concepting a pace and delivering content that is uh, entertaining, topical and irreverent um, and allows us to step into that world and, and be a voice within that discussion and as best we can bring it back to Ryanair in some shape or form. Not all times we'll be able to do it, we'll be forcing it if we can, but our job is, uh, from a strategy point of view is to be the most talked about brand on and off social media and we've been doing some good work to date off the back of that. Um, you know, where some of our content is carrying into editorial and publications one of our pieces ended up being on page seven of the Times print news edition. And um, the Financial Times has wrote an article about being more brand Ryanair because of the approach we're taking to uh, not being a corporate brand or not jumping on, 
you know, happy pancake Tuesday day or the traditional brandy days that are just monotonous and full of clutter. We are trying to be different and disrupt. So good. <clears throat> so good. And, and what is your, so you talk about that um, reactive and community drive, which I love. What, how does that impact against your kind of more proactive content? Because they must be really annoying internally saying, we need to jump on this, we need to jump on this. How do you balance that proactive and reactive? We're very lucky that we're not utilizing a lot of resource outside of the, the individuals themselves right now. We're at very early days in how we're building this team, by the way. If, if you want my view of it, we're only 5% off what we could be. We don't have the design capabilities within the team to actually act faster, but we're okay because what we're creating to support that content the design is, is rough and ready and it allows us to move faster too. So we're not polished or perfect. We don't need too much lines of approval so we can do it uh, equally as fast. Do we want more help from our, our internal studio? Of course we do. We'd love to have them at our beck and call, but that's not a reality. So we're not impacting that too much. In fact, it's the opposite. It's, it's limiting us by not getting the access to them. On the brand and social or activation side, which is the second unit in the team, they're responsible for the more brand proactive planned always on content, our partnerships, our brand comms messaging, our operational messaging, our, our updates and new routes and bases. We're a little bit behind on where we want to be in, in terms of their development and that output. We want to make sure that that is doing a better job sitting side by side with the reactive content. So we're on a journey of building a tone of voice and a style to actually make sure that we execute that correctly. Uh, we find a, an approach that that creative or that output is not vanilla. And I say this a lot to my team and they probably laugh when, when I, I even mention it here, but we don't want it to be vanilla. We want it to be different and we want to be true to Ryanair. So we're a bit behind on that. So we're starting to put the pieces in place. The reason why we went first with reactive is because we know we can win in that space quicker uh, because we have the license to do so. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, a couple of the questions have come in talking about obviously you've now got 1.5 million followers on TikTok. How has that impacted sales? Have you still, what do you see as kind of the value of TikTok and why you're investing so much time and effort in that space? I kind of mentioned our mission there a moment ago about being the most talked about brand on and off social media. So, social media for Ryanair is a cost effective for each channel. Um, we're lucky, as I said, that we have the size of audience and the ability to reach a lot of people at a very low cost and not having to invest too much in paid media in social to deliver that impact. Our success right now is driven on, on reach. Our job is to drive as much top of mind, low cost awareness. And there's secondary then drivers around that about changing sentiment and advocacy um, and then earning more cost effective uh, reach off the channels also. So is it changing the dial in terms of business and revenue or that audience? Um, we can't quantify that, but we have been seeing antidotal examples of other people on TikTok creating videos saying they've chosen to fly Ryanair because of our TikTok. We've witty ones where creators are actually going and saying that I went to see the plane phase and they'd show pictures of the real plane with no eyes and having a bit of banter around that. You know, it is doing a job with that audience in terms of stimulating traveling with us and driving consideration to travel. And um, it would be foolish not to think so. And we have a job over time to see how can we plug that into our current measurement tools within the business from a brand sentiment or customer survey satisfaction and NPS. So are we changing the dial and sentiment? The, the risk we take in, in over complicating it from a performance point of view and trying to track conversions is, it will then change the focus and what we're doing to be very like a conversion led. And we don't need to do that as a team because I'll give you, I'll give you a, a good insider that our operations and our senior management team are confident that if we didn't have anyone in the marketing department or put anything out from a marketing point of view, Ryanair as an operation would still hit the, the target they have of 226 million passengers by 2026, I think. Um, so what is the role of marketing for us? And that's an interesting challenge. So why, why I say that is if we become too commercially focused in our objectives, uh, we'll lose the identity from, a, from a, an entertainment brand and a reach point of view, and it may actually have a negative impact on what we do. Um, holistically, to summarize, we're, we're, I imagine and I believe we're doing a very good job of, of driving conversions, um, but we're not there on how we can best prove that. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, a, cu a couple of questions in terms of just, I don't think you covered it, but team size, when it comes to your reactive team size, how many people are, are in that team? 
So we are, well, funny enough, we're, we're recruiting at the moment. So any of you listening out there who are interested in a social media executive role with Ryanair, there'll be potentially two positions going live soon. And I'm currently hiring a so senior social media manager. So if you're based in Dublin or Madrid, do get in touch and uh, we have we have a team of um of, of what will be eight people um and it's basically split 50 50. the aim of building the team is having like a tripod of senior people me as head of social media bringing in a senior social media manager and on the wish list for 2022 is having a senior creator who has um creative and design capabilities who can then educate and direct everybody else and then sitting underneath that we're going to have essentially three to four people across each unit then who will do the executional work on a day-to-day -day basis Perfect. Makes sense. And I, I guess the, the job title of a social media manager now is changing because you need people who are confident on camera. How, how did you get the Ryanair staff to want to be on your TikTok videos? Because I think that's such a challenge for brands. It, it is. And it's a challenge we're trying to unpack with our tone of voice and style right now. Um, we don't have too many people necessarily directly as the face of the brand. We have a pair of eyes and a pair of lips on TikTok that are doing it. So they're, they're quite interchangeable, even though certain people believed it was Olivia Neal, the influencer, for, uh, for quite a long time. And they were interrogating, you know, freckles above the lip and the, whether the teeth were correct and analyzing it. There were even conspiracy theory videos on who it was. And I tell you how crazy people are on TikTok, but I love every second of it. We are actually trying to figure that out in terms of how we use the creator and take a creator approach to our channels. And that's built within one of our pillars of our strategy. And we're trying to understand that. We want to humanize the character in how we speak, but also what you see on, in our content. And we need to try and figure out how we do that uh, to future proof what we do. So what we're exploring at the moment, and it's very early days. So we're trying to develop a character that each of any well any of the members of our teams will understand its traits how it performs its tone of voice and its style and anyone who comes in and out of the team over the years will assume that character so they will be a they will act and uh, personify this character through what they do on a daily basis how do we make that look and work on video we're trying to explore that right now but we are looking about how we do it because take TikTok for example we have again with without bragging, have created the blueprint of how to do branded content on TikTok from, from day one. There's a few other brands who have done it well in, in other avenues, but what we've done is, is identified how a creator or a Gen Z focused person can take the steering wheel, or Gen Z people can take the steering wheel of the channel, how we found to use trended sounds to grow uh, at scale, and then doing it in a way that is very creative. Um, what is absent for us right now, yes, plain face is almost like the human side of what we do, but that limits our creative capabilities right now and how we can use other trends where there's there's movement or dancing or use of humans. We're trying it by using cabin crew, but we're limited on what cabin crew can do and also the access to them to react quickly enough sometimes. So this character needs to be born. I'm not in the view of using a physical person unless they're maybe a well-known creator or you're guaranteed stability that that person is going to be in that role for a period of time. And that, that may be a fault of mine as a marketeer to want everything perfect. And that's maybe something we'll learn over time that we need to be okay with people just coming in and coming out. But by having a characterization or the Ryanair admin um, visually in content, whether it's a TikTok trending movement or a piece of meme content that is a replication of other well-known memes or original meme content that we'll create for Instagram on board our flights or in the airport, that it's future-proofed as a character. And as people grow within the team and move on or grow within the business, the character remains and it's less of a job to try and, and, and change it because you can see plenty of channels. And again, I, again this is a, an assumption, not fact. Take Duolingo, for example, before Christmas, and um, you could see they didn't post content for two weeks. It was clearly obvious that their TikTok creator went on holidays and there was nobody else to do it. So that's two weeks worth of reach and engagement that they potentially missed because they're not future-proofing how they actually execute on the channel. Yeah, so fascinating and a lot kind of brands that we work with on TikTok always have that issue because especially if, if you have, um, say for example, you're, you're at an airport or whatever you, you need, you need people there to be able to create content. I guess the, the power with TikTok is a lot of the videos you can actually create from home. 
using green screen and filters and stuff. So it does make content creation a lot, I guess, more accessible. It's just having those people who are confident and comfortable being, being on screen. Definitely, and take that off TikTok too. The pandemic has challenged every video producer and creator to think about how we make video content differently in the world of forums and podcasts and, and, and even you know talking head to creative like content. It's challenged us to, to think differently and it's completely changed what we all have created. And, and a, an ex-colleague of mine posted this on LinkedIn. What we have done over the last couple of years as video creators and social media professionals to still keep the lights on and deliver what we've done working from our bedrooms and, and whatnot and working from our, our kitchens for the last couple of years is mind blowing. And everybody should give themselves a bloody pat on the back for that because it's absolutely brilliant what we've achieved. And we're lucky that TikTok came at that time because it allowed people then to be okay with being imperfect and having polished cinematically driven video content. There still and always will be a place for that for certain brands and certain ways to tell stories. But for social media, it's really unearthed. It's something that it's okay to, act, to to create content this way because that's what people want. And it's bloody fun. Love it. Love it. Um, bit of a technical question that's come in so many times that I can't ignore it. Um, trending sounds on a business account or using commercial sounds. How do you, how do you get around that? Again, we used to create our account in our early days and we flew too close to the sun and Icarus's wings started to fall off. So legal got involved. So we had to switch to a business account. What we are looking at, and there will be litigation issues um, to avoid uh, when it comes to that, you're going to have to be realistic that business accounts are where most of us are going unless you want to take that risk and go with a creator account. How we discover a sound that's trending and then apply it to a business account we um, and our, our team are looking at trends and every one of the team has different passion points or interests in what they do. So as they study and explore when sounds and videos are starting to appear frequently on their For You pages, we're sharing those links to each other to see is that appearing on everyone's For You page. So by using that, which is again, one of it was going to be one of my pieces of advice on how to actually identify this is by by having multiple people with multiple interests that are active users of TikTok and um, sending each other what they feel are trending sounds. And if you can spot a sound that is happening on somebody who's interested in football, someone who's interested in art and somebody who's interested in DIY for you pages and that same sound is coming true, you might want to act on that. That makes sense, that makes sense. And I guess you're you internally you're just constantly tracking TikTok, what's trending and just having those discussions kind of always on, I guess. All the time. Um, even sadly out of hours, our obsession within WhatsApp groups or direct messages on TikTok is, is there. Um, yes. But again, we're, we're, we're relentless and curious of what we do. And, you know, what I don't endorse it all the time. Sometimes if we see an opportunity we want to run on because we bloody love what we do, yeah. we'll try and do it. Amazing. So some interesting questions here around, obviously, everyone knows Ryanair. You know, I guess you're relatively lucky that your CEOs and whatnot aren't hammering you for conversion figures and, and sales. So question here, how would you recommend a smaller business, maybe a startup operates on TikTok? Have you got any thoughts from your learning how you'd apply that to a startup business and where the focus and attention should be? That's a difficult one because there's such different approaches. I think actually some of the smaller businesses are doing some of the best work on TikTok like creators. It's taking a creator first approach. Like the difference there with a small business, if you are a single business or, or a single person working within it, or there's a couple of you within it, you probably have more ability to put your face behind it because you are the identity and you're probably the storyteller of what's, what's happening within your product. So you can find a way to show the nuts and bolts of what you're trying to offer and sell uh, if you're using TikTok as a channel. I guess, again, let's answer the, 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 the advice question here. You know, learn from us and what we're doing and identifying the trending sounds and what other big players are doing, but don't just copy what we're doing. Um, you can take our blueprint and add some more, like take example, as I said earlier, we kind of created the blueprint of corporate brands being chaotic, using Gen Zs, and then using trending sounds as best you can and identifying those. Then you add on Duolingo came into town, took our blueprint. Um, and again, she'll probably argue that it's not true. But again, you know, I, I, I'll stand up in court and I'll fight that fight. And um, that she took our blueprint, but added in something of interest, which was that create that character mascot. 
that did exceptional things and has accelerated what they've done even further and they're doing an amazing job but what i'm seeing come true on some corporate brands they're taking our blueprint of trending sounds they're taking the mascot element literally of what duolingo are doing and are copying it and regrettably i'm going to call two out so if you're on the line i'm sorry but Hootsuite and Scrub Daddy have literally just jumped in and taken this and tried to apply the same in the hope that it will work. Now, it will work and people will jump on in the comment section and brands will have all that brand love and whatnot. But for a small business or somebody starting off, it's important that you take the learnings but do it differently. There's so many bloody ways and those for you pages are so different for everyone, especially if you've got a specific target market or target audience. You know, it, it, it's finding a niche and finding an angle and doing it differently. Take the principles of trending sounds, take the principles of using the human character. But there's corporate TikTok, there's DIY TikTok, there's clean talk, which I'm obsessed with, um, that are doing it differently and they're still performing e equally as well. It's just a, just a, such a chaotic space that it's, it's hard to answer. The last piece then is the common sexual section is equally as important as the content you publish. It yields almost sometimes on what we're seeing higher interactions on how we reply to people than the likes or the interactions on the video itself. So don't forget that because that can either, and again, cultivate how your content is performing or build an audience who will then repeatedly see your content more and more and more. Love it. Yeah. And I think the way TikTok's created the ability to create content straight from the comments, duetting is just so, so powerful. And I, I love the way that they've really innovated in the way that you can mm. create content on a platform. I, I just, well, I'm obsessed. I love it. Um, an interesting question here, because you talk about it there in terms of finding your blueprint was, do you find now the kind of the mouth and eyes filters become a little bit done for Ryanair? How do you keep testing and innovating your content? It's not done, but it's, it's limited to, um, we can use it for certain scenarios. There's trends and sounds we've probably tried to do where we didn't have the creative flex of a, of, a, of a human or a person that would have worked better or maybe a design element to deliver better that we could have done. Like we would have loved to say jump on the Celine Dion trend where there was people coming in with hoisting someone on chairs and doing this beautiful performance that would have been just brilliant for us if we had a character who came in cabin crew going everywhere, going nuts and it would have jumped on that train because that was very, very popular. But we, the, Plain Face couldn't have done that by simply singing the song. It just wouldn't have worked. So Plain Face will live on and will always be there. And long live Plain Face, um, the legacy of what we've done, but we're limited with it. And um, so we'll be very, you know, we'll be very uh, tactical and when we use it, when it's the right trend, but we need to flex a little bit more and almost what we, we're calling in here is TikTok 2.0 for us. How do we, how do we flex more? Amazing. Love it. The, the team who create content, you might have said this, but I may have missed it. Sorry. So the, the team who create content for TikTok, are they also creating it for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or do you very much have a blinkers on TikTok because it's so different? I know it's bleeding into your Instagram a little bit now, but. It Originally, originally we would have, but again, this is all about future proof in the team is that I want everyone on our team to be TikTok savvy because whether it's a reactive piece of content, a piece of always on content, either say TikTok or Instagram Reels, uh, we need to be able to use the space because it's the best place to optimize and grow those channels. Um, we are trying to build it out, but currently there's one person who's an absolute ninja at it. Um, and they are, are playing face. Uh, I'm not going to any identity just Yet, but if you look hard enough, you'll actually find out who it is. Um, but we want to equip more people on the team because that person needs to take a holiday, just like the Duolingo girl. Um, and yeah, we need to have content still going out. So if for the next two weeks and you're on paternity leave and we don't see plain face, is that, is it you? I, no, I think you can tell if you can look close enough with the big gap between my front teeth, it's not me. And that beautiful bum fluff too. And those innocent white eyes. I have bloodshot eyes from having two kids already, which will get worse if baby is born. So sadly, it's not me. I have created TikToks though, believe it or not. I am an old person who's created TikToks that have performed quite well to the disgust of my team. I love it. Whenever I come up with an idea internally, it just gets booed. So potentially they should listen to me more is what you're saying. Yeah, well, I, if I, I, I might do dad talk maybe and uh, start my own channel. Love it, love it. I think I'm going to do Lego talk. Lego talk. Ooh, I like that. 
Um, I know, again, big brands, so you have some benefits, but how do you convince people internally that TikTok is the way to go and, and investing money? Because we talked, again, before other people joined about how TikTok's kind of transformed the way people use social. So, so how did you sell it internally? And what would you recommend for, for brands who may be a bit apprehensive about getting going? What's the advice you'd give? I won't have had much advice here because if we didn't have to sell it in, we just did it, you know, because we can do it. Uh, we can explore new channels and we're looking at new channels and setting them up right now and we'll get buy-in because there's a, an element of trust or an element of the senior management don't know. They need to understand it. We want to educate them, but they don't know. When it comes to investment too, that's the beauty of TikTok. Um, the investment really is on the headcount. Um, and it's on the training of the people or the existing people learning and being savvy with the channels. And if they're not getting in somebody who can absolutely nail it or get more people, you don't have to invest much money in TikTok. Like look at our example of our of our our couch guy video that got 40 is a 42, 43 thousand video views. We literally ran downstairs and got crew uniforms. We grabbed people within the office and we made it in a simulator over, over the room in, in 30 minutes. And that got 43 million video views. You know, the beauty of TikTok, it's not a high investment channel. It is if you want and your objective is brand awareness and uplift or conversion. And that's where TikTok paid media is going to come into play. But people then have to be clever that the creative needs to be fit for that channel and not just taking a Facebook stories ad and shoving it down on a TikTok for you page. Yeah, I, um, I trended on LinkedIn over Christmas because I basically shot John Lewis down because all they did was their Christmas advert turned it into nine by 16 and whacked on TikTok. And I was like, you basically created the unexpected guest. Why are you not using that more? It's genius. Yeah. It just Look, that's down, to, that's down to many factors. And I've experienced that too. That's time, resource and budget. And look, internally, there's already, there's always so much channels and there's more belief in traditional media, which is right. If we have budget to use television, I use television. It's still up there with the top for me. I just pay media on YouTube because it's such an important player in terms of, of reach and scale. So the, tr the traditional is still there. It's just they probably weren't set up and they didn't think about it. And it's probably not the lack of the social media team wanting it and fighting and pitching it. It's just that they didn't get buy-in and that's a challenge sometimes. And that, that can be very frustrating. So I can relate with that over the many, many years I've had to do it. I'm just very, very lucky with, with where I am right now that we can live and breathe this and, and, and try to do the best we can. Again, would and, and how, how can I compare with, with others? Like I've worked with brands where we've used millions of euro on creative and, and media and still not have the same cut through than what I'm having with spending next to nothing. And that's not a bad thing. We live and breathe a low cost airline. We're a low cost business. We're very smart and savvy, but we have the brand, the identity. And it, once we build and cultivate the creative capabilities internally, we're onto something very, very special. Love it. Love it. Um, one question is coming. Do, do you work with any influencers or do you just focus on your own channel Ooh, boo influencers boo influencers uh no what i'm going to say i'm going to sound quite arsy here um we work and want to work with creators now we're not going to spend overly and heavily invest in big creator campaigns or collaborations unless it's right for us but we we do have an appetite to collaborate and work with creators um, and we're working on how we approach that with activations and any problems we have from a brand point of view how we potentially use creators with content on our channel or content to their channels. I think creators are more important than influencers. The difference being is we're trying to step away from that fake filtered world that has been created on Instagram and elsewhere. And influencers have been a huge driver of that. And fair play to them for making money off working on brand partnerships and build, building followings off the back of that. But the credibility is starting to deteriorate time and time. And they know that which means they're starting to become creators themselves and build their own brands and products to sell to an audience they've built. With the creators, it's different. There's something tangible there. People and creators on TikTok and other channels are comics, artists, designers, craftspeople who are creating and designing so much interesting things that people are wanting to see and know about more. If we can find indirect ways or direct ways to work with them that is right for us, we do want to work with them. Um, but we will be very efficient about how we do it. Again, we're again lucky in the sense that we can still reach quite a sizable audience on TikTok and other channels right now and growing um, and doing an okay job and transforming what we're doing to do that better without the need for external partners or collaborators. Um, but there will be times for, for, say, joint advertising campaigns or tourism boards or looking at how we can look at tactile activations that's right for us without just doing what everybody else is doing and get cut through. 
Um, so yes, creators first, influencers, uh, your time has come, but it's time to go. Love it. So are we, are we going to see uh, Cabby Lame doing this on a Ryanair flight anytime soon or uh, a guy with a GoPro on his head looking at planes instead of trains? Who knows, Francis, we'd love to bring him. It all depends on how, <laughs> what their budget is and whether it works for us, you know. So uh, we'd love to work with creators like that. They're absolutely amazing and, and they inspire us in what we do all the time. But um, as a business and how we deliver, it mightn't be the route for us, but unless we, 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 we find the right op and we can prove why it's going to work for us. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Do, uh, quite an interesting one here, like again, creation wise, do you ever see a trend and think that's just gonna take too long to do? Or do you have a, a, a process in terms of if we can turn that around in say an hour, two hours, we'll do it. If it's gonna take longer, you just sidestep. What, how, does, how do you think about that? So some trends you'll see that are, are accelerating or you've only noticed it when it hits that, say, let's say a threshold of 7,000 uses to 11, 12,000. You see it's going to take flight very soon. Um, I use an analogy somebody else who spoke to me about reactive content. It's about hitting the bell curve at the right time. Go too soon, you're not going to get the cut through or it's not going to uh, run its coattails. You go too late, you're not going to get the pickup of others because they're riding that wave already. Uh, but if you hit the bell curve at the right time, um, it's, uh, you know, it's money in the bank. Uh, we don't shut anything down. The only thing that shuts down is when my team tell me, no, Michael, that's not right for us. You're too old. That's a silly trend. Um, and my ideas are shut down. Uh, we don't. If we can turn it around quickly enough, we can do it. How we how we track that is if we spot sounds appearing on pages that are hitting three, 4,000 views, we we'll keep going back and looking at those sounds that we've saved to see are they growing. And once they hit that window of opportunity, we're going, okay, this might be the one for us. And then how do we go about delivering it? If we can't deliver it, okay, find which one of these sounds are within this window of opportunity that we can deliver on. Um, and, and we just do. Makes sense, makes sense. Just um, a question just to clarify your difference between a creator and an influencer. That was just a question that popped up. So I don't think that was quite clear enough. For those oh, listening. Maybe I've insulted somebody here. Um, the difference between a creator and an influencer, an influencer who is somebody who is a, built a self-built following off the back of working and collaborating with brands to make a living from it. That would be what I would perceive influencers to be. Now that's not saying everybody's at it and that's no disrespect to it. There's some incredibly clever people who have built a living out of this, who have built homes out of this and have been very smart at the window of opportunity. I just don't see the credibility in us standing beside them and delivering partnerships of that stature unless it's right. Because again, they are the credibility and jumping from different brands to brands is obvious that it's a paid partnership as in exchange for money. Whereas if we look at a creator, somebody who is a comic or a comedian who is, sit, suits the right tone of voice for us that we need to deliver a type of message or solve a problem for the business that is right for us, that can create the content themselves and um, not just stand in a photo with a piece or a product and push hashtag ad and actually offer something of substance. If we can find a, a, an apparel designer or a graphic designer or a musician or an artist who could potentially create a sound for us for TikTok, we will explore that because that is looking at people who is who have something tangible and created something tangible that um we think it's it's the right partnership to do i hope that explains it and uh hopefully i haven't pissed off too many influencers <laughs> and and if i have um sorry not sorry <laughs> so i think uh this shouldn't this shouldn't be a spoiler for any but um obviously ricky gervais we saw in afterlife three um bring cole anderson into uh into it and again that creator-led approach is just so amazing i, I think you're absolutely right I love it. And even Cole Anderson's um, approach to try and get to get that role. If you watch the video about how he did it and, and how he kept on bugging him, he eventually got through to Ricky and, and he managed to get in the show. It was actually a fantastic story. So good. So good. Um, comment moderation. So we talked about replying to comments and using that as inspiration. Do you also have a customer service team that looks for genuine customer complaints or queries or... Yeah, across social media, yes, we do, but not necessarily on TikTok. We try and direct people to specific destinations. Anything that's a customer issue, we try to direct a direct message on on Twitter, which is an Ask Ryanair or Facebook direct message, and then anything else is off the platform into the help center. Are we great at that? 100% no. We're very lean in terms of the customer service team that we have, but we're on a journey making that better. So, for example, I'm working closely with um, our customer service team, our PR team, and our HR team, 
um, a lot of ores there, um, to look at our current channel ecosystem to see are we set up for success and how we evolve our current channel setup, what's going out there, the tactics that we're doing, and how can we do better with the time, resource, and budgets that we have. So customer experience is not an issue in TikTok because we don't have much issues. When there is somebody who complains about something or gives out about Ryanair in the traditional sense of the Facebook trolls, they get shut down by the community. They're told to go over to TikTok or Facebook and complain there, get out of our fun space. Um, and isn't that interesting about what, what we've unpacked and unfolded in, in, in TikTok? So good, love it. Have, have you experienced uh, experimented with TikTok live at all? Is that something you're gonna do? No, we, we've talked to TikTok uh, partners themselves. We're looking enough that, um, again, please don't go to TikTok and ask for what we have, but TikTok consider us to be actually a media partner as opposed to a brand. And um, yes, they're coming after us looking to see will we spend lots of paid media with them like every other brand, but um, we've got access to a couple of conversations and, and, and um, time with them to talk about how we look at doing better. We have dabbled about live. We do want to explore things like potentially this is where an opportunity might be interesting, looking at gaming and gaming creators and seeing would they be interested in coming into one of our training bases and flying our simulators and doing live streaming. Um, something fun, something cool, and something interesting to the gaming community. Love it, love it. Um, in terms of like, how do you actually produce TikToks? It's quite interesting because some you have to actually film within the app. Do, do you use a sort of like management tool or how, how do you structure internally to actually do it? And then reporting as well, like, how do you do that? Uh, from a production point of view, we try and keep as much of it in app as possible. When you use the filters and you all use all the imp app elements, that does benefit the performance of the content or so TikTok tell us. But sometimes there's challenges around how we can do that and edit it. So we do bring it into Adobe. We'd have um, some of our people on our team who've got basic uh, skills on that, but then we'd use our, our in-house studio to, to, to refine it, make it better and upload it and then add whatever elements we can to enhance the performance in filters and, you know, um, and, and, and other elements. In terms of performance, we use obviously the business dashboard available. We pull the data onto a, a weekly dashboard that we're doing ourselves. We're en route, again, reporting isn't greatest. Again, this is down to the junior side of the team and the, the, the inexperience and the time we're all in the business. We're rebuilding reporting dashboards right now. We work off a weekly dashboard where we're reporting on reach, video views, interactions, and shareability of the content because we're using, say, like the shareability as a, as a marker for advocacy. If people are willing to share our content, they're they're in some shape or form signaling that they advocate it. So if we see an increase in shareability over time, and that's retweets on Twitter, saves on Instagram, shares on Facebook, shares on TikTok, it's letting us know that people are potentially enjoying the content. And we're working on that dashboard, we're, we're building it up. And then over time, we want to evolve that to a more um, automated version. We have a business intelligence team within the business that we've put, we're putting a brief into them about building a, a reporting dashboard for us. Once that is evolved into that, into the automated version as best we can, then we're going to start looking at how we then connect it to our CSAT, our customer satisfaction survey and our NPS to see our platforms like TikTok and the content on TikTok changing our NPS scores across the business. Amazing, that's awesome. That's awesome. And um, a couple of questions have come in, just almost um, the ones you'd expect, really, which is, do you test when to post, number of posts a week? Have you done all of that testing? Have you found any learning? There was a magic formula we followed for, for a while until we all got paranoid thinking we were getting shadow banned by TikTok and we were calling it out that, um, yes, we had a consistent time around evening times, um, a specific time. I, I won't release it. Um, our, our, our guys on the team might give out to me about our, our secret formula. Um, but we, we posted evening times at a specific time. We had a frequency originally of three times per week because what that allowed it to do is if we nailed the right trend, we gave it a 48 or more hour window to breed and grow its viewership if we were publishing too frequently it may have impacted that but as we see saw a big drop in performance and um, in kind of coming to the end of, of this year and what i mean by low performance is if we saw video views of two or three hundred thousand video views we consider that bad for us <laughs> you know so that's insane <laughs> that we were like 300,000 video views and reaching 300,000 people we thought that was underperforming and um, that uh, we started to publish more and try to figure out a new way of improving it. And we still don't know. And it's it's causing a lot of annoyance about trying to get that magic number back or that tactic back. Um, we're trying to understand what it is. We, we are blaming shadow banning, but I, 
I, I imagine it, it's probably down to the increase of other brands getting better and the introduction of paid media, which is making it a challenge because they want us now to start paying for, for eyeballs um, more and more and more. And will, will you start doing that, paid? It all depends. Do we, we use paid media tactically across the business um, for certain sales and marketing campaigns to promote content? Less likely for a brand campaign or, or something that is delivered by some sort of promo and offer. I would consider it. We need to test it first. And we are in conversations with the, the media team we've built and we set up the, the ads manager. So we're ready to go. So we will test over the next few months budgets in there to see how this will compare to the likes of Facebook and YouTube. Amazing. Um, just going back to your secret source, this may be a secret source one, but if your content isn't performing so well, do you, do you delete it or you just leave it? Um, we leave it. Um, I, I can't remember if we've deleted a couple in the past, if they've absolutely canned, we might have reposted at a different time, but we leave it. Um, look, it's, it's only happened of recent, it's driving frustration, but um, you know, we'll leave it and learn. There's still, a, uh, again, what's important is there's still a, a pocket of people who still see that content, who still love the brand and the content, who want to comment and engage and have a conversation with other people and us that we have an obligation to continuously do. And we want to make sure that community is being cultivated. Makes sense. Makes sense. One, one thing I see um, Ryanair doing, and it's one of the questions that came in, is actually actively engaging on other brands' content. I know you and Duolingo have got some sort of like epic relationship on TikTok. What's the importance of having that kind of proactive engagement on third parties? And would you ever comment on a non-branded account? That's uh, we do, yeah. If we're tagged and the, the content is right. So if people are actually filming content within their journey with us, we'll engage with them in some shape or form. We engage with a lot of creators and um, a lot of brands. Look, the brand thing at the moment, um, I've mixed views about it. It's fun and it's a bit of fun and banter and people are seeming to be enjoying it. I think the brand account managers or the social media managers of the brand seem to be enjoying it a hell of a lot more. Um, but a lot of them are coming in because they, they, they want to try and, uh, you know, they want to get access and see what it help engage their content even further. We, we're doing it just purely for fun. Um, there's no agenda around its performance or tactic. It's just, it's, it's a fun thing to do and we get more visibility. And as I said, the interaction on content and the comment sections of of the actual, the raw content itself is 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 performing sometimes equally as good. And you see if, if another brand or we engage with it, the interaction that's happening on that response alone might outweigh the actual performance of the original video that we jump in on. Makes sense, makes sense. Two quick questions, because I've just noticed the time and then we'll, I'll get you to kind of summarize if that's okay, Michael. So um, a lot of people have asked, you talk about training your staff and team to get better at TikTok. Have you built something internally? Like how, what, what is your process or advice for training people on, on being better at TikTok? It's about creating a habit. Um, everyone on my team is not savvy on the platform as others. There's one or two who are obsessed with it and the rest of them are just not. They, they enjoy it, but they're not obsessed. It's just start creating. I have put a challenge to the team, whether it sees the light or day or not. I want one reel or one TikTok made from everybody per week to start with. Some will obviously make more because that's within their role, but I, I want a commitment from everybody to start making and learning about the platform and getting used to how to make and use the in-app capabilities of TikTok and reels to just do it. And that's my only advice, just start making. Um, don't worry about it being not right. Don't worry about it not being perfect, just practice. It's about creating a habit. If you continuously do it and continuously uh, make it, you'll get better over time. You'll naturally get more creative in your thinking. You'll identify more trends because you're using it, but you'll just get comfortable with the tool and stop being scared of it. Um, it's just a really fun thing to play with. And we're lucky that it's absolutely doing a smashing job for our brand. And, and do, you, do you create with mobile phones or use cameras? Mobile phones. Okay. We're, we're, we're in app. We're rough and ready. We're, we're good to go. We will, we will just do it on the fly. We have a team phone that we use as well for, for to pass around the house if they don't want to use other phones and we go from there. But yeah, it's just make TikToks, just play with it. Um, there's no big strategy or, or training plan around it. There are plenty of really interesting creator tools though that TikTok have on their platform. If you go into the desktop and you see the creator place, you'll actually be able to filter and see what sounds and content is trending based on categories that at least could be a starting point to get you thinking about the type of content you want to make. 
but just make them. Love it. Love it. Um, I, I guess a lot of people are still there, like, how do I persuade my boss to actually make this happen? Most people think of TikTok as still just young kids dancing, right? How, how do you dispel that myth? Because we all know it's rubbish. <laughs> it's like 20 odd million active users in the UK now. Yeah, look, bigger. it's getting bigger than YouTube and they're going to roll out five minute videos, which is to go after and cannibalize YouTube even more. And I don't believe YouTube is going to go away, but it serves a different purpose. That it's a difficult thing for me to answer because so many businesses are set up in so many different ways and you you maybe just might not get the sign off needed to, to use the space. It is a particular channel with a specific way that has to be entrusted to the, the, the person who's creating it. And if you don't give them that freedom to do it, it's not going to work. If you then try to be a corporate brand or you try to do what you're doing on Instagram, on TikTok, it's just not going to work. Um, so, you know, it, that's a difficult one to answer. If your marketing manager, your director of marketing or your CEO is just not going to let you take the keys of it and give you the responsibility to do it, um, you're going to have a hard job of doing better. The advice there then is go on TikTok and go pay media first. Superb. So um, coming up to about seven minutes to go, I know I've gone massively off piste in terms of the questions I had planned, but one was um, the kind of like three pieces of advice. I think you covered them earlier, but it's probably worth just going back. Yeah, I'll recap them. I, like the, the three ones I, I, I see at the moment as most value from, from our point of view view is, is learn from us and the blueprint that we created and what other players have done um, about using the people who are savvy and native to the platforms within the channel to create the content but also uh, engage with people in, in, in with the content take then the added layer of what geolingo have learned from our blueprint adding their elements of how to bring in elements to flex so you can create as much trends and content as possible using a character but don't copy that please don't copy that because it's going to look the same. You're actually going to probably get called out for it. As you can see other airlines trying to do what we do and the Ryanair mob go after them um, and, and cancel them straight away. But it's just, it's not going to work for everyone taking that approach. It's find something that is right for you and simply don't copy, find the angle, be unhinged in what you do. Don't be afraid to break the brand guidelines a little bit if you're allowed to. And um, if not, do it and beg for forgiveness, because if it works, you're going to be the, the next the, the hot topic within the business and you're going to get promoted or at least get a raise because everyone shouts admin needs a raise. But be on hinge on what you're doing and don't treat it like any other social media platform because it's not. It's the opposite. It's actually social the way it should be. It's bloody brilliant and fun. Last one then is the comment sections. Um, treat it as equally as important as the content itself. Don't just publish and walk away. Um, engage because you, there's a big added benefit to how, how that community plays out. And um, not just in the interaction with the comments you reply to and the fun you can have and how you can add value there, but the shareability probably of the content, which will then hopefully boost and grow that content to, to over time. Do, do, do you ask yourself before content goes live, do you have like a question that you have to answer before something goes live? Like we internally have something called the nonsensical source that we put content through to kind of make sure it's got that hook. It's, either funny or emotional reaction. Do you have anything like that internally? Yeah, well, it's not written in stone yet, but we, we we're working on it. it. Like one, is it entertaining? Two, is it creatively chaotic? Three, would it appeal to a European wide audience? Uh, four, would other corporate brands do it? And if, if the answer to the last one is yes, it's not right. Do something else, do do something different. Um, and that's essentially it. Love it. And how many people review the video before it goes live? Is it just you? just me and if i'm not here i'll get somebody else either senior or somebody else within the team um so good just having that that culture just so embedded into your team is just absolutely incredible i mean it doesn't come overnight no and i, I but that that's that's ryan air that is the empowerment you have you know and that's what's brilliant about this business you know people love us or hate us as a brand and flying with us as a customer um, but it's an interesting place. You're challenged. It's fast paced, but you will be given autonomy. Um, just don't, 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 don't mess it up. <laughs> Love it. Just before we, we come into that final question, which is going to be what is like your top secret to success? Someone has actually asked, does the admin actually get a raise? 
we're thinking about setting up a GoFundMe page. So if we put a link out afterwards, if you all want to contribute, um, we, we can get them a nice holiday somewhere or maybe a new car. Um, but yeah, I can't disclose the financial situations of my employees. Uh, I plead <laughs> the fifth. Very, uh, very well answered. So, uh, Michael, three minutes to go. What is your secret to success? What should people take away to their own businesses and think about TikTok? Look, we got lucky. Um, we got in there early. We had the creative license and freedom to, to, to try and actually work in the space the way it needs to be. And we excelled and we grew. We got lucky. So if you're going to a, a new channel that's emerging or what you're trying to do now, I, I, can, I, can, I can empathize with a lot of people trying to start in TikTok now, two years into it, where a lot of other brands have got ahead. Unless it's a bit like, again, I could compare it to podcasts. Everyone, the world and its cat has a podcast now. So imagine trying to start a podcast now without somebody rolling their eyes going, not another bloody podcast. Unless you've got a big hook or a big face or a big person like a Ryan Reynolds, for example, coming into TikTok, that completely exploded. Unless you have something of that leverage or doing something completely niche and different that completely explodes out there, it's going to be a hard job. We got lucky. And that's one of the top secrets, you know, and it's not fascinating, but we got lucky. I think the other one, which is important, is how to unearth the trends and opportunities. It's don't just rely on one person to steer that platform. They have one for you page, which is the brand one or their own personal account. Some of them may have four or five accounts, which they're using and they're trying to train their algorithms to be different. But you need to have more people bought into the platform in your team externally or rely on other people to help validate the trends you're probably doing or help discover ones that may win for you and um, you need to have more people supporting you if you're delivering TikTok. if you're not it's a very difficult thing and um, but if you have niche and leverage and you're on your own you might get you might be on to a winner and um, but yeah look at look look at the secret to our success like it is for for many people and many platforms amazing amazing and with literally 30 seconds to go i just want to take this opportunity Michael, so thank you so much. Um, I'm pleased to say that your child won't be called Ollie or TikTok, so that is probably a good thing. Um, we're going to um, share the, the recording with you all, so check your emails, make sure it doesn't go into spam or, or whatnot. Um, we're also going to send out a link to our TikTok report, so the top 50 UK brands killing it on, on TikTok. Ryanair, as you imagine, is very high on the list. Um, but yeah, just a massive, massive thank you for all of your insight, for being so transparent and honest and, and answering every question I threw at you. Look, it's a pleasure. And um, obviously this one is available. There's a previous one without, if you don't mind me plugging called Content Cal, where I talked about TikTok similar, but a little bit different. So you've got two potential resources to learn about us. And um, our objective now is to stop talking about TikTok. Our job now is to talk about Ryanair Social as a whole. The work we're doing on Twitter and Instagram um, I encourage you to go and look and see and follow us if you want um, and learn how we're evolving those channels too. And we're going on a journey. We're very far away from where we want to be. Um, so I look forward to seeing how we, we, we roll it out over the next eight to 12 months. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And thanks everyone for, for tuning in and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thank you.